Hey, Scott Trainer here, host of CNY Flavor. We've got a great show in store for you. We're going to do some uh, traditional beef dishes, uh, Delmonico steak, ribeye steak. We're going to do a marinated steak salad. I'm going to show you real easy how to do it, how you can save money at home and do this restaurant quality. Hey, welcome back to CNY Flavor. Uh, we've got a great show in store for you here. We're going to talk a little bit about beef. You know, there's, there's, there's a lot of misconceptions on what the quality is, the grades, the cuts of beef that you can purchase in a supermarket uh, or your local butcher. You know, and I just want to talk a little bit about that, maybe give you a little inside stuff because you got basically three cuts. The USDA, which is the uh, United States Department of Agriculture, is the one that does the grading. And it's come such a long way over the years that you can pretty much guarantee that you're getting a quality piece of uh, beef when you go into a supermarket. Now, they do try a, a, lot, of, a lot of things that they do uh, to lower costs and stuff is they'll give you a no roll, uh, which is actually cow. So ask your butcher and, and they have them on staff that you can pull them out from the back and talk about the, the cut of beef that you're gonna get because you can go all the way from a brisket uh, that's a slow cook method, whether you're gonna do a crock pot uh, or you can go up to your prime cut which is has more marbleization you know a lot of people when they when they see this and they see the fat content that's what gives it its flavor as the enzymes start breaking down so you have your prime cut you have your choice which is really what a lot of the supermarkets carry today is your choice cuts and then you have your select and your select a lot of times is your no roll is your cow uh, they do have the angus billing where you can be have a certified steer and there is a different taste and it all boils down to the connective tissues uh, the marbleization that's inside the meat uh, that's going to give it a, a, a very quality uh, taste throughout your product. So really check out the type of dish that you're going to do, the recipe that you're going to do it in, because it's important to get the right cut of beef um, so that you get the best tasting food. What we're going to do here, and another thing I want to talk about real quick is uh, Delmonico steaks. And you hear about these Delmonico steaks. The Delmonico steak is nothing but a ribeye. Okay, that's all it is, and it's the way it's cut. It's a thicker cut, and, and they call it a Delmonico. They do it on an Italian basis, uh, a little more garlic in it and everything, um, but it's really just a ribeye steak. When you get a, a piece of beef like this, it's a lot cheaper for you at home to do. I know it costs a little more buying it up front, but remember, you can, you can and I'll show you this a little later in the show, how you can pre-cut your steaks, how you can wrap them in a saran wrap and actually freeze them and it'll last you three to six months okay this particular piece of beef that we're using um, you could use for an actual prime rib slow roasted prime rib depending upon how you were going to cook it and then you cook the whole thing at once i cook it in a slow uh, roasted method uh, you can cut them up into steaks you can call them delmonicos you can call them ribeyes uh, you can make them as thick or as thin as you want. And then your ends here, a lot of people will trim off the fat. Don't trim off the fat. You can always trim off the fat later as you go. Uh, the end cuts here, what I'm going to use that for is a marinated steak salad. Okay. Uh, I'm sure you've heard the term aging before. And, and what a marinated does is it helps age the process. It helps break down the enzymes uh, that are in the piece of beef. And so you, you basically, you start out, you got your nice beef here. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to cut this into steaks first. I'm going to leave a piece off that I'm going to show you how you can quick freeze this for about 30 minutes. And then that, that helps you actually slice the beef. Uh, it firms it up a little bit. Doesn't freeze it. Just 30 minutes. It, it actually brings in the, the, the connective tissue together and you can slice it a lot easier for your marinated uh, steak salad. So why don't we get started and we're going to start right here with slicing the beef. Is this who you'd call if you need a mechanic? 
Is this who you'd call if you need a babysitter? <coughs> no Sheep Designs is the right call for your business when you need professional, affordable web development, photography, or video production. With a decade of experience, we have the knowledge and passion to bring your project to life for much less than you'd expect. Visit NoSheepDesigns.com today to see how we can help you. You know, you're looking at cost here, you're looking at just about $36 for the piece of beef. Now you can cut this uh, into any ounce portion that you want. If you've got a hungry man at home or a hungry wife at home, I don't want to discriminate here. Um, you can cut it as big or as small as you want. I like cutting them into eight to 10 ounce uh, portions. You can take your thumb basically and, and put it up as a guide right next to it. And that will work out to be about eight, nine ounces. Uh, if you have a smaller thumb than I, you increase it a little bit. And basically you take it and you're using it as a guide. You're coming straight down. Remember safety here too. You're coming straight down and you're just slicing it with the grain. Now look at all that marbleization inside this piece here, okay? It's a wonderful piece of meat. Leave the, hat, let the fat on. I'm going to show you a couple different ways how you can do this. Again, you can call it a ribeye or a Delmonico. We're going to take this. I'm going to do a marinade on one with a Sweet Baby Rays. And then we're going to do one traditional, okay? So we're just going to lay them out. And then I'll show you how to wrap them too. So you're just coming down. Always safety. Push it apart. I ought to be able to get about eight or nine of these, okay? So I'm going to keep my boning knife there. See that? I almost cut myself, even on, on film there. See how I didn't move my hand quick enough? All right. These are about 12 ounces that I'm doing here. Look at that. Oh, I love this beef. Now these here, if you buy it like this, you're looking at about $4.62 a pound compared to if you bought this as a steak <coughs> uh, pre-packaged, you're going to talk about $8, $9 a pound minimum. A lot of times I see them in the supermarkets, they're $10.99 a pound because you're paying for them to do the cutting like I'm doing right here. Now here's this steak right here. I got to show you this because this is so beautiful. Depending upon your family size, um, you can keep going. I'm going to leave about the size of three steaks to do the marinated steak salad. Cut it straight down. And depend, you know, depending upon how you like using a knife too, I wanted to show you this because as you cut it down, if it gets a little strong for you, you initially start the cut and then you can use a boning knife here and you can use it just like this coming straight down okay gives it a nice cut look at that I'm gonna save the rest of this for the marinated steak salad I'm gonna trim a little of this fat off I'll do that right now we'll put this in the in the freezer for about 30 minutes and that'll toughen everything up so that when I slice it it's not gonna fall apart like this okay and you can get a better handle on it this all here is going to be for your marinated steak salad. I'm going to take these. I'm going to wrap a few of them. Show you how to do it properly with saran wrap. A little trick there. And then these can go in the freezer for about three to six months. They'll last, okay? Uh, otherwise, if you're going to put them in your refrigerator, you should get them used probably within two to four days, okay? My product is flawless every time. Their quality and uh, service is second to none. What has most impressed me about them is their constant um, yearning to please the customer. Um, my favorite thing about Master Images is absolutely the customer service. The main thing is the quality is excellent. I wouldn't go anywhere else. So we have the end cut in the freezer getting ready so that we can start slicing that. Uh, for the marinated steak salad. As you can see, I've cleaned and sanitized the cutting board and my knives. And if you want to learn how to sanitize and clean your cutting board and knives at home, go to cnyflavor.com, uh, click the quick tip, 
topics on the section because we have different quick tips that we use throughout the show uh, and we actually show you how to do that. So please go to the website, cnyflavor.com and learn how to clean and sanitize your cutting board and utensils at home. It's really important and when you're talking food safety for your loved ones, your family, your friends that you're entertaining, uh, especially dealing with raw meats that you clean and sanitize properly, okay? One of the things that I've found the most easiest when you're dealing with saran wrap, stretch tight, there's all different names for it, but it's saran wrap, okay? That's how what it was when I was a kid growing up. Um, Sometimes when you use it and you're trying to rip it and you're trying to wrap something, it'll bundle up on you and fall apart. This is the easiest method, method that I have developed and found. I take it and I just roll it straight out like that right across my board, whatever I'm going to use. Take my steak, okay, or beef, whatever I'm doing, and you see I just laid it flat on it. I roll it over and then I flip it, okay, and now if you're trying to pick it up and you're trying to rip it across, it gets all bundled up. Just take a knife, look at this, sharp right there, boom, done. And there it is, just like that. And I'm gonna do several of these that I can put in the freezer and pull them out as needed be. Now we're gonna take one of these steaks and we're gonna marinate it. I like the Sweet Baby Rays, it says barbecue sauce, but it's wonderful for marinating too. Uh, you can use a variety of marinades. You can make your own marinade. That's the beauty of cooking and culinary arts. It's an art. So we're going to put a little in the pan here. Always use glass or plastic when you're marinating. So we're going to take a little of the Sweet Baby Rays and we're just going to pour a little on the bottom. You should see me open this bottle. Oh my God. What I'm saying is it was tough. I didn't do it on camera, okay? So you're just going to take it, move it around a little bit. You're just going to get a little base on the bottom. See, now I don't put it in so that it's all underneath. Basically, you're just going to get a nice brushing on it, just like this. Okay, and again, you can use these with direct heat, indirect heat, barbecuing. You can bake this. Uh, you can cook it on a, on a stovetop. We're actually going to cook it on the stovetop in just a little bit. Going to let it marinate. Now you should let it marinate for four to eight hours, okay? That's usually the, the standard rule. If you're dealing with fish, uh, you can let things marinate from two to four hours. But when you're dealing with beef, pork, lamb, uh, you should always let things marinate for four to eight hours. Sometimes it's just as easy to do it the night before, leave it in overnight. So there it is. We're going to cover this with saran wrap, put it in the fridge. And then we're going to take the other Delmonico, ribeye, whatever you want to call it, and we're going to get ready to cook that. We're going to put some baked potatoes in the oven and get going. Hey, welcome to Crazy Auto's Empire Diner. That's 100 West Albany Street right here in downtown Herkimer. You may remember me or notice me as the host at CNY Flavor. You can come on that website at cnyflavor.com and learn all about the cooking show that airs on Tuesdays, every Tuesday. But we're talking about Crazy Otto's Empire Diner right now. You know, a lot of times you see TV shows, you wonder if the cook, the chef is there, if he really actually cooks or he actually is in a restaurant. Well, I'm one of the guys that have been there, done that, and is still doing it. Right here, you can come in, you can see me cook. I'm here virtually every day here at Crazy Autos. They don't call us crazy for nothing. Uh, everything here is fresh and homemade. As you can see, we fresh slice our tomato. Everything's done fresh to order. Uh, doing actually a BLT right now. This is Michael, uh, also happens to be my son. Hey, all right. Hey, welcome to Crazy Autos. Come on in, give us a try. You won't be disappointed. You know, another thing too here is that a lot of people will take a nice cut of beef like this and cut it. They'll slice into it or take forks and um, prick it with the forks to try to get the marinade down in it. Don't do that, okay? It ruins the, the beef. It ruins the connective tissues. You don't need to do that, okay? In a little bit, I'm gonna talk to you and show you how you can tell uh, what is rare, medium, and medium well just by the insert of your hand and, and basically by touch. That's the best way to tell how you want to cook, whether it's medium rare, rare, uh, medium, or well done, medium well. You can just by touching your hand, and I'll show you that in just a minute, okay? 
but don't cut it, okay? It's going to ruin the taste of beef, the, the beef. It's going to actually overpower the taste of it. Um, and it's not what you're looking for for a quality restaurant, quality uh, type of beef here that you would pay $30 for a plate uh, down in Manhattan or even down in Utica, okay? So don't cut it, don't prick it. So earlier we were talking uh, about putting your fork in the beef and, and cutting things for the marinating process. Don't do that. We're going to do some baked potatoes. Now's when you do prick them, okay? And you got to be real careful because a lot of people will hold it and just stick it in like that. I've seen people go right into their thumbs and to their hands. You got to be real careful. Even with the tines on the fork, they become very sharp, okay? So just take it and I like putting in three on each side. That's it. Now, if you don't have a fork, okay, I want to show you this too, but you have a knife, it's the same thing, okay, you just stick three in on each side. So depending upon the utensil that you have handy, that's what you can use. And then what you're going to do is we're going to take these, we're going to wrap these in tin foil. Now, you can do it one of two ways, okay, you can either wrap it in tin foil or you can put them in right on a rack like that or on a baking uh, pan just like that and they'll cook. I like putting them in tin foil, especially at home uh, because it seals in all the juices. It cooks a little faster. I've already preheated the oven to 500 degrees. Uh, they'll take about 45 to 50 minutes and I'm gonna go ahead and wrap them. You can do them a couple ways. I'm gonna show you two different ways to do them. You can take them and just do it just like this and then take your tin foil See, so now you have something to grab when you're taking it out of the oven. Like that. You can reach in with your little pot holder. Do it just like that. Okay, now another way. Tin foil is a lot easier to work with than the saran wrap, as you can see. So I'm not doing my knife trick. Okay, this one here, you're just going to roll and fold. Like a baseball, run it around your hand. There you go. Two different ways that you can wrap them. They've both been preparated. I'm going to finish these up. They're going in the oven. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Christy from In Home Photos. You might think that you can't afford family photos, Christmas photos, or even senior photos. Well, think again. $75. That's it. $75 for great photos of your family. We can do outdoor photos or bring the studio to you. I can set up in most average living rooms with lots of backdrops to choose from. Call or visit inhomephotos.com to schedule your session today. So we took our end cut of the piece of prime rib, ribeye, um, out of the freezer. You can see how it's all steamed up. Uh, that's because it's been cold. Okay, and we're just going to take this right out, right out of the wrapping. And we're just going to trim it right down. You see the meat right there? See how the grain's going this way? That's all I'm doing is slicing it down. I'm not taking out any of the fat content at this time. Okay. So I'm just going to start taking some of this fat that's off the edges. Okay. And what I'm going to do... This is for the marinated steak salad. I'm just going to cut them into little strips here. Okay, as you can see, little strips. And you can get this, this will feed right here on the marinated, marinated steak salad, a family of four to six, just off this end cut, okay? This here is all going to be marinated now, and we're going to use this for the marinated steak salad. Marinated steak salad is real easy. Again, as you've heard me talk, uh, let me find my little pan here. Use glass, don't use metal. And balsamic vinaigrette. That's all it is, okay? This is what I'm going to use. It says it right on it too. It's a dressing and marinade. You can get different types of the balsamic vinaigrette. Uh, this is a, a major brand here. You can buy them local too. They make little ones. This here, you're just going to take, and this one here, you want to actually 
get it submerged, okay? Because you want the beef to really work itself out. And that bottle there that I just had there was a dollar, uh, I think it was a dollar forty-nine. You can look for things off sale. You don't have to buy the name brand. This right here, you're just going to work in with your hands. My hands have been washed and sanitized. Okay, so here's your marinade. We're going to cover that. You should put that, again, four to six hours in the refrigerator. We're going to cover it. Just let it sit there. Let the juices all flow in, and that's an aging process, too. It's going to break down the connective tissues and make it really, really tender. Hey, thanks for joining in this week to CNY Flavor, where we learned a lot about beef. Make sure you tune in to next week's episode where we're going to show you, I'm going to show you how to cook it. Real good techniques. We'll see you next week. Hi, Scott Trainer here, host of CNY Flavor, and I have the wonderful opportunity to sit here with a, a unique restaurant here in downtown Rome with Nieve, which actually means snow, and it is snowing outside. <laughs> uh, this is the Caribbean restaurant, Caribbean, Caribbean restaurant, okay, which is Hispanic food, um, which is unique to this area because there's really no Hispanic restaurants down here, correct? Exactly. This is the first Spanish restaurant in, in Rome, and we are so proud of that. And Nieve, how long have you been here at this location? We got exactly one month and two weeks. One month and two weeks, <laughs> yeah. and I understand it's really getting a good hold here in the community. It is. People are so happy that we came back here, and uh, we're happy we're doing something, so it's okay. good for us, and good for the community, too. What's your address here? The address here is 401 West Dominic. West. It's, in the cor it's in the corner. It's like an orange building. It's a, and it's a beautiful building. Uh, your husband has done a lot of work to it. <laughs> yeah. And uh, he ap actually is the chef too. <laughs> yeah, he is. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about your menu, okay? Okay. Because you have a lot of unique items on the menu. It is. I noticed uh, octopus and <laughs> goat stew and uh, tell Ox me a little Ox oxtail. Oxtail. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that. Yeah. Tell, tell me a little bit about your food. Yeah, our food is like not spicy. It is like a um, uh, Spanish American food. So you got flavor, it's got like a little touch of spicy, but we also have a spicy if people want spicy, spicy food. Uh, it got a unique flavor because it's, uh, uh, actually we're not giving our recipe. Right. But, yeah. <laughs> but it is a unique because nobody else has in that in the area. Yes. Do you have anyone that's doing this business with you or is it just you and your husband? No, it is a partner that came with us here and she got a lot of experience. Okay. Her, name is, her name is Hilaria Soto. She, her husband, our oh boy, ex-husband. Got the one in Utica. Oh. They okay. call El Carajo Restaurante. Is that the one on Bleecker Street? Exactly. Okay. Because that, that, that has a lot of the same recipes and food? Yeah, they got almost the same thing as us, yeah. Oh, okay, great. Because that has a great reputation. And that's what mm -hmm. we like here at CNY Flavor is to highlight the flavors of central New York. Uh -huh. Hey, welcome to Crazy Auto's Empire Diner. That's 100 West Albany Street right here in downtown Herkimer. You may remember me or notice me as the host at CNY Flavor. You can come on that website at cnyflavor.com and learn all about the cooking show that airs on Tuesdays, every Tuesday. But we're talking about Crazy Auto's Empire Diner right now. You know, a lot of times you see TV shows, you wonder if the cook, the chef is there, if he really actually cooks or he actually is in a restaurant. Well, I'm one of the guys that have been there, done that, and is still doing it right here. You can come in, you can see me cook. I'm here virtually every day here at Crazy Autos. They don't call us crazy for nothing. Uh, everything here is fresh and homemade. As you can see, we fresh slice our tomato. Everything's done fresh to order. Uh, doing actually a BLT right now. This is Michael, uh, also happens to be my son. Hey, all right. Hey, welcome to Crazy Autos. Come on in, give us a try. You won't be disappointed. Do you have a website? Yes, we do. It's uh, Caribbean315.com. And we also got a uh, page in Facebook. Would you like to tell me what your hours are at this location? Well, sure. Actually, we here from 6 o'clock in the morning, but we are now open. Okay. <laughs> We're just cooking. We just come and make a fresh food every day. That's I want to very point it out. Who is fresh from every day? We know exactly like how much we need to that day. Okay. So we make it that quantity. So next day we come at six o'clock in the morning. But we open actually from uh, eleven to nine. I, I noticed that your um, 
specials board has six dollar lunch specials and dinner specials for eight dollars and yeah. two dollars uh, for the extra meat or rice. Yeah. Those, those are great prices, so it's really economical to come here and you could actually yes. feed your family for, exactly. for a good price. Yeah, you go to the supermarket, you spend more, more than one meal than here. You know, I like the fact that you said that everything is done fresh. Okay. Oh, yeah, it is. You, you don't buy like the canned sauces? Oh, no, no. We got our own recipe yeah. and everything is make it like a natural. Garlic, right. cilantro, everything is natural that we make it. Everything's fresh. That's that, why the flavor is unique. Here at CNY Flavor, we like to, to focus on local businesses, uh, supporting each other, the community. Yeah. And I understand that your bread is mm -hmm. bought locally and it's fresh and you buy it every day. Yes, we buy every day from Palo. Palo is a bakery. It's a bakery? It's a bakery that I bring a bread every day fresh. So we be sure that we don't stack old bread. So, so our sandwich come very good. You have a buffet style, so if someone wants to come in quick and get something to go, they can do that really exactly. quick. Exactly. And if I want to sit down in a, in a beautiful uh, dining room, I can sit down. Yes, we got the menu. You can choose from the menu what you want. Actually, this is something I want to point out. We don't have a, you can bring your own wine. Okay. And we open it for you. We just charge a little thing, a little couple of dollars. Yeah. Right, so whatever you bring in, you you have to drink here. Exactly. Okay, and you have, you have to be of age too, right? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, no mind, no, no, we don't want to be in trouble. <laughs> okay, let me ask you one question. Sure. What is your favorite thing on this menu that you cook here? Well, for be honest, I like everything. <laughs> it's hard for me to choose, but um, the one I most go is oxtail. Oxtail? It's the tail of the cow, but it is, I know, I know it sounds uh, funny, but it's the best beef. Okay. The flavor is unique. See, and I invite you that are watching <laughs> the show here to come in and give this a try because it is absolutely mm -hmm. wonderful. Is there anything that you'd like to say to the customers that are that are watching behind me <laughs> and on the side of me? Sure, I just want to say, uh, actually, I want to thank you, the community, okay. for the opportunity they give us to, you know, I know they're scared to try our food, but um, first thing, I was, like I said in the beginning, our food is clean, it's fresh. Well, I'd like to wish you all the best here, thank uh, you. and I'd like to implore you guys, don't, don't be so narrow-minded uh, when you see, you know, Caribbean food, Hispanic food. Come in and give it a try. You got nothing to lose and everything to gain. Uh, avocados are on the menu too. <laughs> and just everything that you can come and get a wonderful spice and flavor of the Caribbean right here in wonderful downtown Rome. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I really thank appreciate Thank you to the community for the support. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay.